today we have with us uh, Juan Dorsch, who's with uh, CSCS, Swiss National Supercomputing Center uh, in Switzerland. And he currently is a um, software engineer there. And he's been working with the uh, Firecrest project, which is the uh, API uh, HPC service. And he's uh, going to give us an update about uh, efforts in, along those lines and uh, give some general background as to the, the capabilities that it enables. So with that, go ahead, Juan. OK, thank you, Jonathan, for you for inviting me. Uh, I will share the screen. Uh -huh. Share. Yeah, so I think you can see the, the presentation there. Yep, looks good. OK, then. so well, uh, Thanks for the presentation. I, I will present also, I introduce a little bit my background myself. Uh, I'm a software engineer. I, I come from Argentina. Um, and I started to work, when, when I started to work as a software developer, one of the first thing I started to do was working on web development, because I really was interested, interested on that. After getting my, my grade in, in informatics engineer, that had a lot of background on scientific applications and scientific methods. I started to work in an HPC center in Argentina, very, very small for the, for the scale that you manage here in, in, in Europe or in, in the United States. Uh, and I really like always the idea of having this interaction between development, web applications, and HPC uh, resources, which is really difficult to find sometimes. And uh, since uh, 2019, I started to work in, in Switzerland in, in CSES. So um, that's my background. And uh, I would like to show you now some uh, introduction of CSES, uh, which is the Swiss National Supercomputing Center. Um, and CSES doesn't stand for exactly for Swiss National Supercomputing Center because we are in the Italian part of Switzerland. So this goes for Centro uh, Espiritual de Calculo Scientifico, which is not exactly the same, but it, you can find some similarities. Uh, we've been here in Lugano since 1991, but not me, but some people still is here. Um, we are part of the ETH Zurich, the uh, Technological Institute of Zurich. Right now, or uh, until the, the 2021, because uh, this information is for the official brochure of CSCS and I really have the 2022 because it will, it will be uh, released uh, on July or June, I think. So we have around 160 employees from 23 different countries, which becomes a really international um, uh, HVC center. So you can see that we have around 2,300 users uh, for projects. Uh, we run uh, we help institutions like ETH Zurich, the Polytechnic from Lausanne, the University of Zurich, Bern, Basel, Geneva, basically all the universities in, uh, um, in Switzerland. And we have different research fields and all the applications have this kind of research fields, so chemistry, materials, these are the most important. At the same time, we work with third party services collaborations like the Blueprint Project, or Human Break Project, which is an European, uh, European project uh, from the European Union. Uh, CHIP, which is for the um, CERN. So we have the analysis from the uh, collisional, particles collisional there. Uh, PSI, which is the Posher Institute, with uh, amount of data that needs to be analyzed uh, here. And of course, the Media Suisse, the Meteorological Service uh, of Switzerland. <coughs> And about the machine rooms and the machine that we have in CSS, well, the flagship is Pistane, which is a, a hybrid of uh, a Cray XC40 and 50 nodes uh, with 5,000 more than 1,000 hybrid uh, GPU plus uh, multi core nodes. And we have the cooling system from the Lake Lugano because Switzerland is an amazing place where you have a lot of lakes and a lot of mountains. So we Take advantage of that. And, uh, in that 
figures that you see there in the, in the photo from, from, the, from the bottom, uh, when you have the, the machine room, that is all cooled by water of the Lake Lugan. And um, it's uh, returned to the lake with minimal uh, environmental impact, which is something that we really like to stay here in, in CSCF. So, <clears throat> given the, the introduction of myself and the center, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the motivations of, not of this presentation, but the motivation of the work I've been doing on, on CSCF with uh, FICRE. So, first of all, I will show you an example of a project that I was um, I was working since the beginning in, in CSCS in 2019. Uh, the project is called CELVEDA. It stands for Service for Large Scale Volume Experiment Data Analysis. It's a long name and we put in charge of CELVEDA. It's a collaboration between the Fosher Institute, PSI, as I mentioned before, and CSCS. It's a Swiss university collaboration. And the thing is that PSI operates this machine called the Swiss Lifestyle. So they, and I don't really understand a lot of this, but uh, just you know, for, <laughs> for a brief uh, over, overview of what, is, what, what this is, uh, this is basically an infrastructure range uh, machine that analyzes the surface of objects in a really high resolution to get information about the structures and the properties of the materials that compose this, this surface. So they can have like a protein crystals uh, that are important for pharmaceutical research or magnetic properties for new storage technologies and so on and so on and so on. So that's what PSI does, but what they want, or what they, they want to do with, with, this, uh, with this machinery, with this SLS is, um, analyze objects in a, in a pipeline, right? They call it the beam line. So they have a machine called the typography scan that takes image of different resolutions. And uh, they do experiment with that information. Those, those images, they are really, really big. We're talking about sizes of gigabytes and terabytes. Of so uh, the thing is that people from PSI the scientists, they have, uh, um, they have a window, the time frame of time to use the beamline because they all want to use the typography, but they don't have the, the time to do it. So they need to do the analyze of the object in the machine and then the fast feedback experiment in an HPC system that they have really fast in order to find in these images region of interest to do another iteration of the typography in order to get Results, right? So the the problem here is that they need to do this as fast as possible to get the, the time window from the from the from the beam line. Uh, but the problem is that the computer, the, the HPC system they have in PSI is not fast and not powerful enough. They need a supercomputer. So that is when cell uh, starts to contact. CSCS. So when PSI start to contact CS, uh, CSCS and CELVEDAS starts. So CELVEDAS is the project that will provide the workflow between the PSI beamline and CSCS computational resource to achieve this fast, uh, fast feedback experiment. So PSI will have a workflow that will become with sending this gigabyte of data from the experiment in the typography from a web portal that they provide to CSCS. CSCS will analyze the data, will store data in some places that they need to be stored, and then will expose the data for be retrieved to PSI scientists over a web portal and to do the second iteration. And this has to be all done automatically. This all has to be done in a specific time frame because they have the beam line. Time frame. So all this has to be synchronized in a way that CSI and CSCS work together. Now, um, the problem with this is that we can find different solutions to or different uh, approaches to solve this problem. Um, but they are all different and they have different issues that we need to, to attack. And at the same time, 
when we started to work on this, we saw that the, there are issues and, and problems that need to be addressed when we have this kind of interaction of advanced scientific workflows on HPC. So what are these problems or, or what are the type of issues that we found with this? Uh, first of all, that and users, they need to integrate HPC into, um, into their scientific work, into their advanced scientific work. It's not just submitting a job. They need to do a lot of different things. And this is challenging for the users because we don't have a development standard to work with HPC. You can use the stage and you, can, you have a lot of libraries, mm -hmm. language and programming languages that allows you to connect to a remote server and to execute commands and stuff, but this is not standard. So if you find a solution, probably it will be a solution that just you know, that you, just you can understand. And, and at the same time, uh, you will create your own workflow. And if another guy wants to do the same, if another project wants to do the same, you will have to create another workflow. And that will be growing and growing when people want to use more and more uh, advanced workflows in HPC. So that's a problem because we have multiple workflows that will lead to multiple support approaches. So I can, I can see your code and I can see that you have a problem, but then if another guy does the same with another different approach in another different programming language with another different library, then I will have the problem of supporting it. So that does not scale, right? At the same time, to allow this advanced scientific uh, workflow, we need a modern interface for what we have in HPC resources. So it's not the same for, um, for users to connect to one cluster to another. Maybe they have a bastion. Maybe they have another way to connect. Maybe they need to use uh, SSH credentials. Maybe they, they allow to use just public keys. I don't know. There's different way to access clusters. So we need to abstract the access to the cluster. And we need to abstract also the object and the resource of the class. The same for job schedulers. It's not the same for a user to execute a command in Plurm that in Torque Maui and PBS or OGE, I don't know, there's a lot of different tools. So uh, it, it will have to be the same for developers to use a scheduler in any, uh, any system, any HPC system, and it doesn't have to be a different way to program. So we need abstraction and standard. The same for file system operation, the same for moving data within file system, because for instance, in CSCS, for moving data, we have uh, a, a specific partition that is used for this large data transfer within file system. And maybe you don't, you have another in there, and you have another in, I don't know, different uh, HPC center. So the idea is to standardize these components, this HPC resource. And also, interfacing with what we already have in our HPC uh, services and infrastructure. We want um, to create something that uses what we have, what we already have in, in, in our infrastructure. Avoid to build something, avoid to reinvent the, the, the wheel and be as lightweight as possible. So with all this in mind, <clears throat> um, we came up with the idea of using Fiverr, of creating Fiverr. So we have to achieve all the things that we, we got there. We have to address all those issues and problems and, and try to do something that uh, provides us of a solution for advanced work. And we came with this definition of Fiverr uh, at the end of, 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 of developing a lot of Fiverr. But Firecrest is a web-enabled API to HPC resource. So this tries to present a standard programming interface uh, that is based on the concept of REST API, the standard of REST API. So you have here the concept of a standard HTTP communication. HTTP is the protocol, as you all know, uh, for web development or for web communication. So REST API gives you uh, standard requests, standard responses, standard calls of responses, and standard format. So you standardize the communication between um, 
your application or what you want to do in your uh, advanced workflow with the HPC resource. At the same time, HTTP is independent, it's agnostic of any language. You can use uh, Python, Java, .NET, Bash script, everything with HTTP. The idea is to translate web requests into HPC business logic, into HPC commands, HPC um, data mover, and anything that is, needs to be done for uh, doing this, this scientific work. At the same time, that the response is a web-friendly format, like for instance, JSON or XML or some, day, some uh, response data format that can be understood and can be uh, easily used by a developer to parse the data in, in the web application. At the same time with FireQuest, we want to provide, by using this standard program interface in web, uh, providing web interface for classic HPC. So the, we know that when the networking, uh, all the all the networking is you know more and more used uh, and advanced in, in speed and advanced in, in in programming, we now can have a lot of different devices support for multiple devices uh, to uh, face HPC resources. And this is really interesting because we can have now HPC. Uh, communication with devices like smartphones and like tablets. And this is something that brings more people to use HPC. So that's another of the, of the objectives of this kind of work. At the same time, we want to allow uh, that with one component, you can do different or you can achieve different solutions for your, for your problem. Um, so, the idea that Spiker is, is, is thought is that you have different components in different ways, in different orders, so you can have different workloads and solve different uh, problems that you might have when you have to connect or you have to program over HPC resources. Uh, this abstraction works like a leg. So you have a Lego, you can build different things with the same Lego, put in different orders, and once that you know how a component works, that is the best because you know how to put it in everywhere and you can change it and, as I said, address different uh, problems with the same component. And last but not least, and this is very really important, is about security. Security um, is an interesting matter on, on Pycrest. We try to integrate uh, authentication authorization layer with standard uh, identity and access management solutions, IAM solution. Um, we try to use, we have in the, in the center for, uh, in, in different HPC centers, but standards that they are already there, like uh, OIDC, uh, IAM, in a way that we are as possible, and we rely on an, an IAM layer that is already there. So that are the premises and the features that we have for Fiverr. So before moving, um, I know that we have the, 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 the idea of Fiverr's vision, and now that we have how uh, the features are um, defined for, for, the, for the work that we want to do, we, I want to show you the uh, Fiverr's API. So I will, I hope this works because I want to show the page. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think you can see here the page. So I will show you the API of Fibris. You can get the API from the from this page. I think that everyone can access. And I will show you the different features that Fibris provides to developers and how this is um, how this presents uh, a standard way of, of programming. First of all, uh, we have endpoints for all the abstractions that we found on the on the different problems. This might be different to HPC uh, APIs that go around, but I think that we all go to conversion to a, to a same place. So uh, for instance, if I see here the this uh, status system machine name, uh, this endpoint shows us the, um, the status of a machine in a, in a specific, uh, yeah, the status of a machine. So you have the status endpoint, the system. So you can see all of this is pretty standard. So a developer can see 
that we can provide um, that you can provide the, the method, which is the, the get method, that you have parameters. So you have a machine name. You put here the machine name, and you will get the information in the response. And you see that the response are all standard response, like 200 for everything is okay, 404, which is a known <laughs> name for pages, uh, uh, resources that you don't find. So if the system doesn't exist, you will have this. And you don't have to do a ping or program or something that does a ping or try to connect to know that the system is available. You, with this, you will have the information. And you will have uh, an example here, and you have a scheme of the rest. With the what you expect from that, what you expect from the from the from the API, and moving to the, for instance, the utilities, you can list directories, uh, make directories, uh, change some um, resources like, for instance, the, the, the permissions on, on the on the files and directories and the ownership, and you see that the different uh, different verbs that are used, the different methods that are used, they all are related to the actions that they perform. For instance, get is for listing something. You don't do any action more than get the status of something. Like for instance, the directory. So you will get information. You will get um, you will get this kind of response in a, in a type of a list because you are listing directories, and you will have this information in order to program your advanced workflow. Your web application over HPC. We use POST for creating things. Um, some, everything that is used is, is used by a POST. PUT is a verb for changing the status of a resource. In this case, as I say, it's changing the, the permission on a file. And of course, delete if you want to delete something. This utilities um, endpoint is used for a small non-blocking called POSIX. Unix operation, and you can see that they are mapped to specific commands. So right now we don't allow to execute any command. We just allow a specific commands to be executed. Uh, as you might infer, is uh, of course the um, job submission and let's say scheduler, workload manager endpoint. And the idea here is almost the same. It's post for submitting a job, creating a, uh, something that runs in your scheduler. And you see here that yeah. we use the example of a local SVATCH file. This is an abstraction. So we can map to, with this idea, we can map different schedulers. This is something that we are working on. You can list the information of the, of the job. And of course, you need to cancel a job and get accounting information. We uh, have two different ways of managing storage. One is for the internal, this is moving data from one file system to another file system, same HPC environment. Um, that you can see that can be used with different commands here. And then we have the external, which is when you want to transfer data from your, uh, from a remote server to uh, your laptop or vice versa. So you have the upload, doing the upload and download. And I will explain those a uh, little bit. So that's uh, briefly uh, the API. And I don't want to go to all the points because I think that it will be really difficult to, to explain all those in, in, in this time. So uh, as I say, this is the API documentation where you can see all the information. And now that we know what we want to do with Cypress, uh, I would like to show you how this can be used, how the API and the concept of, of um, web programming over HPC can be used in, a, in an example. So um, the idea is to perform this HPC web portal to create, to develop this HPC portal. I hope it can be seen. Um, but you can see here that the idea is that we have this, uh, we call it Cypress Slide because the idea is to show how these um, jobs running in Dane in a flagship, and this is a real example, are um, running how uh, files in a working directory are listed and updated all the time as they are created or removed or updated. So as I say, the idea is having here um, the list of jobs that are actually running. Uh, some of them are already complete, so they are in gray color. 
in yellow you have the the running one which is just one and the pending uh, are in gray we have in this bottom half in the left side the parameters of the problem like for instance how many nodes we want to use job how many steps this job will have and the base name that will be uh, appended later the name the number of the step of course and the partition in date and the constraints we have in date gpu and multi-core so it's gpu or mc you can use one of those and when you click the button submit job all these jobs are spawned so the button has been already clicked for this simulation and it creates a new working directory with a specific uh, uh, random number, or I think it's actually a date. Uh, and there you have all the files, that, the initial files that are copied, and then all the files that are being um, part of the solution, right? So and this is all really nice. And you can see that some of these visual components relate to both of Piper. So for instance, you can see that to see the list of jobs running, you can use the compute jobs endpoint. To see the files that you have in a specific directory, you use utilities ls. Uh, to submit a job, you use the post compute jobs. And when you want to start the post processing of the data, you will use, of course, another post job. And I forgot to mention that automatically when you submit the job, the, First thing that is done is create the, the directory with a main beer. <clears throat> but okay, it's, it's okay. It's, a, it's just an example. So to show you how this works, uh, actually, really briefly, and I don't want to do a tutorial of Fibre uh, with web development, just to show you how this is integrated into a web application. I will show you the example of how the the um, compute here, the, the sorry, the jobs here are being shown automatically so this visual table and if you know some html uh, can is basically mapped into a html table uh, when we have all the headers with the columns of the data that we want to show here, right so um, all these are related to a data field that we have to go from uh, a data url and so you just have to program in your backend this this URL. And this is a, actually, uh, if you know bootstrap table, this is just a bootstrap table. It automatically uh, helps you to, to refresh the data from a URL automatically, uh, as I say, again. And this is done by the auto refresh, and then you have the interval for the updating is 15 seconds. So what happens in this list job endpoint, as you can see um, here, sorry, here is that internally it calls five so it calls five in the compute job it passes the name of the machine in a header because that's how the specification of the api tells you to do and then you get the information uh, here in this uh, request this is i'm just using python so, so if you want to know how is this done this is a flat uh, library which i really like to use in it's the same if you do this in JBoss with Java, if you did do this with PHP, if you did do this with uh, Bash. You will have to change some specific things. So what it actually do is call in Fikers, same data that Fikers gives you in a JSON is mapped every 15 uh, updated and every 15 seconds moved and populated here in the table. So you see that how easy and how, I don't know if easy, but uh, you have to follow some specific steps. And these steps are really uh, all standards and the abstraction are quite clear for understanding what we want to achieve with Fibre and uh, the specific web portal in this case. So finally, the, the last thing that we do with this is when we click in update for processing and the data is, is calculated, we, <clears throat> we get the solution information that is moved from the from the bank, in this case, from the HPC service using the expert, uh, ah, actually this is the expert external, I forgot to put it, oh, sorry. But it's moved to the, um, to the front end 
and for some GIF uh, library, you can show that animated GIF that you know goes with the with the flow of a thing in there or something like that. It's a um, flow dynamic fluid uh, solution with with a Python module. But you can see here that you can integrate really easily these components. Like if there were parts of 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 the of the problem into the application, which I, I believe is really interesting for them. But now that we have how to use the um, how to use the endpoints, and we find we, we know which endpoints we can we can use, I think it will be really interesting to see how we solve Selveda with Fiverr because that was the, the beginning of the, of the presentation, right? So we know now that, that we have Fiverr and that we can use this component to interface the PSI web development and the CSCS computational resources in a way that the workflow that they needed to solve, that we need to solve because we were part of the project, can be achieved uh, by using uh, web interfaces in, in uh, HPC. So first of all, this is the PSI point of view. So the scientific point of view, uh, external scientific point of view, they will create the work for, um, web portal uh, that interacts with the PSI beamline and at the same time with the Fikers API. So for them, it will be uh, sending the object to be, um, to be analyzed in the typography, getting all the information and all the, all the images, and then send the images to Fikers. And like a black box, automatically turn the analysis in a URL. So they will download, like I said, that file. So uh, that seems to be really easy. And that is what we actually achieved. But we have to, to, to pass for several, several steps before. Like for instance, uh, which are the steps that we have to we have to make, or we have to uh, achieve to, to, to get the information into the into the HPC system, in this case, into Dane. So they had to perform uh, all these steps using Fiverr. First, create a directory for the problem using the utilities made here. Second, upload the data once they have the, the directory using the storage expert external, because this is uh, huge, huge data uh, transfer. And they had to do all of these steps sequentially in a way that they need to know when one step finished to start the other and manages, uh, you know, errors and success uh, messages. And of course we can provide that because we have uh, HTTP response codes and HTTP uh, response status that they have this information and they could make all of these a pipeline to, to work. Uh, and once the, the, the data is stored in they they need to start the analyze. So they should do the job with the compute endpoint. They just use, in this case, we have Slurm. So basically it's a connection with Slurm. Um, once the, the data is, is already analyzed, they need to move the data uh, to the scientists. So they, the scientists will need to have this data to enter again to the beam line, right? Uh, the, the, the analysis of the data will be the region of interest that they need. So they trigger the download. And what Fikers does is moving the data already analyzed that the user needs to a staging area, object storage staging area, like a temporary storage place. And then Fikers will inform automatically that the download, temporary download URL is exposed for the scientist. So the scientist will have the portal and at some point, they will have like a message saying that your URL is here. You can download your tar file, and you start downloading tar file using this uh, this URL. And this is really interesting because uh, sadly I couldn't show you the the web portal of PSI because it's, it's their work and this is a kind of a confidential thing that they have. But it's really interesting how the user can just submit a job and wait for the URL. That is that is really good. And that they, all these this internal calls are done using HTTP is also something that is really interesting and how easy it was to set up all of this. And they have another workflow and we could set up those workflows also with Python, uh, which is really, really interesting. 
but all of this is really nice and all everything worked like uh, smoothly let's say but we have to understand how packets work internally to give an approach of you know some security concepts and this kind of things like the staging area and i will show you because this is the most boring part of the presentation yes there is a more boring part of the presentation and this, this one uh, so uh, the very simplified approach that we have with with Pycrest is that you have uh, as developer you have a specific portal and you just want to uh, do HTTP requests to Pycrest API and Pycrest is sit with win the external users and the internal of, of the of the HPC center where it where it sits actually will translate this HTTP request into commands that can be executed. Um, uh, or as I said before, uh, um, things that can be used in, in, into, into an HPC server, an HPC service, right, an HPC platform. And at some point, uh, take this common output of the, of the command that are executed in, in, in a system, an HPC system, and pass it into a response that it can be understood, that can be taken by a developer as a standard response, like a JSON response with all the things that need to be there response code, um, the status code, and everything that you that you already saw on the API. So this is a very simplified approach at this stage here. Uh, but you might first think, okay, but I can execute something, but how can I actually access Pycrest? How does Pycrest authenticate? And um, this is really interesting because Pycrest doesn't do all the authentication. We rely, as I said before, on an IAM layer that is already provided by um, the HPC infrastructure, or the, yeah, the HPC infrastructure that we have in several HPC centers, like in this case in CSS. I am relies on the OpenID Connect uh, protocol. So we have a server which is Keyclock that works with the OpenID Connect, and what we ask for the client application for the for the scientific portal let's say to interface with Pycrest is just an access token. Uh, a JSON web token is the standard for for using HTTP connections. So for us it's really good because uh, this token has interesting characteristics for um, for security. They have just five minutes uh, of valid time. They can be used uh, only if we trust in the source of the, of the token and we don't have to do any authentication with the with the with the web, web application we just trust in, in in the token in this case the, of course the, the the developers and the scientific application what they have to do is uh, register their application on on a oidc service in this case we have key clock it will depend of your oidc server in in your uh, in your center and you can rely on external also uh, external services. What we only ask is a JWT token with a specific configuration, which is the standard configuration of the token. And yeah, that's pretty much it because uh, we also configure packets in a way that we access, we accept only tokens from a specific uh, server. In this case, we only draft in our um, Keyclock server. But at the same time, we have a specific configuration. So if you have another token from the same Keyclock server that we trust, we don't allow any token. We just allow the ones that are for a specific uh, Firecrest client, in this case, a Firecrest web application, okay? Uh, and now that we have access to Firecrest, you might think, okay, how does Firecrest execute the command? How, how Firecrest know that I'm executing something in Dane, for instance, or in, in any HPC system? Well, in this case, what we have is a translation. We take the token, we take the information from the token that is verified, and we extract user information to create uh, user credentials that are capable of ex being executed in HPC. In this case, we use SSA certificate. So we have certificate authority. Uh, and the SSA certificate has really interesting features that we like characteristics that we like from, from there, which is that we can create for a short period of time, we just have one minute, the, the, the credentials just 
is uh, the certificate is created for the validity of one one minute, and we can inject a specific command to the executor. So if you, for some reason, saw a certificate here, well, we will have a really big problem if you saw something here. But <laughs> let's say that there is something there that can can get a specific certificate. Then you just can use it for a specific a specific command and a specific parameter. And these commands are written by, by, by FICRE. And the execution is not from you to FICRE, it's from the FICRE uh, service to the machine, but on your behalf. So we don't do any sudo or root or any kind of uh, execution of that kind. The certificate has your name. So you are executing the code. So if you execute anything there, you cannot execute, uh, you tweak something or do something nasty to delete uh, files from other persons or get uh, files or, or, or you know, cancel a job from some other people because this will run in your users. And finally, uh, we have how we work with the, how do we uh, deal with the external transfer? So the, the, the main issue with external transfer is that they are really huge. You know, we have gigabytes sometimes terabytes of data that needs to be transported from external uh, uh, server to our internal service. And we have to provide a non-blocking response to the, to the call. So what we do is um, detach the, the communication for the API one side and the transfer in another channel. And for doing that, what we do is moving data um, from external and from internal things to a staging area. In this case, we have uh, an object storage technology that uh, allows Swift and Amazon S3. So we have the possibility of using both of them. And we provide you of a temporary upload form if you want to upload and um, or of a download temporary URL. So if you want to download, you can use it also uh, as that. And um, this is really interesting because if you don't have in your infrastructure, and I'm coming back to this of using things that you have in your infrastructure, if you don't have, which is really weird, an object storage in your HPC infrastructure, then you can rely on another trusted service from third party or some other, other things that you can use. And this gives us the flexibility of having these uh, temporary, um, sorry, these uh, uploads and downloads of large data and not uh, rely on services like Globus that are really good and we don't have anything against them, but this, uh, this will drive to people to, to have to um, install this kind of uh, software in their laptops or in the servers where the web application runs, and we don't want to do it. So what we want is that everything will be as HTTP as possible, as a standard as possible, and we achieve that with, with this. So now that you know the internals of FICRES, I will get some, some conclusions for, for this presentation. Uh, by using this uh, really expensive graphic design um, that we have, uh, that we have to pay you know, for, for when we did this, uh, this interesting, and I really like, I really like the, 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 the graphics. And we have to use it because it's, it's really interesting. And the idea of FICRES at the beginning was we're moving from the bottom half, you know, this disaster where we have different workflows for different users that are executed in different ways. And we have to manage in different ways in the HPC provider side to a more um, advanced integration for different workflows that not only allows you to solve these advanced problems in scientific workflows, but also to bring more people to HPC by these kind of scientific portals and web applications that allows you to use uh, HPC in a, in a personal mobile device, right? Um, and also facilitating the, the, the work of the people that work in the HPC provider side, because we want to, 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 you know, to, to support all this, these workflows. But if we have, we have one entry point and we have one solution for this, then it's easier for all of us to manage different workflows. 
At the same time, we try to enforce security as possible with uh, remote, remote access, with uh, access tokens and common execution that is, uh, as you can see, enforced as possible the security. And we also uh, lock all of the commands that are executed. We also provide filters for specific commands, so we execute a specific thing. So we enhance and enforce security. We know security 100% is impossible, but we try to do as, as secure as possible. And finally, what Cycles uh, achieve, I think, is, is the, which is really interesting, is integrate different uh, parts of the infrastructure of HPC centers into um, <clears throat> into the workflows of, of Cycles that allows us to not reinvent the wheel uh, for this kind of thing. And finally, before giving you um, uh, some documentations and links that you can see for Cycles, uh, you we have the product. Uh, CSCS uh, page, which is the place when you can see all the products that CSCS provides. Uh, of course, the link to the GitHub repo, which is not only the code, but you have a demo environment there when you can uh, with Docker Compose or uh, Kubernetes, if you have Minikube, Micro Kubernetes, or if you have a Kubernetes cluster, you can deploy uh, Firecrest fully, I mean, with all the components, even including uh, Keyclock, a uh, cluster uh, HPC system and uh, also um, a menu as an object storage and a lot of components. The demo application, you have this, uh, you can check check it out. It's really interesting. And of course, the documentation. I, I will also go to the to the web page here because we have the documentation in red dots uh, when you can see all the well, all the definitions, all the things that we have in Cypress. And you have also hands-on when you can check with the batch and we have here all the all the um, uh, definitions of the method and the possible status code that uh, HTTP responds. And you have here, for instance, <clears throat> uh, examples in batch and in Python of how you can uh, check some endpoints and get information, uh, like for instance, listing files and stuff like that. And also we have um, PyFigress, which is a Python client, because we know that sometimes doing uh, these kind of things in uh, in uh, HTTP like request here, uh, it's a little bit tedious. So we use a wrapper, a Python wrapper. When for listing a file, you just have to do this something like client that list file. The, the, direct, the directory here and the other part, the first parameter is the system that you want to, you want to see, and you will have all the information uh, of, the, of the output. Uh, I think it's easier to use than this. I use it a lot, and I really like PyFiker, so I, if you want to, to see it, please check it out. And that's it. That's it from my side.